Josh Jacobs, Calvin Ridley, and Kyle Pitts. They're going to be busy. Anthony Richardson, he's on the mend. And we've got quarterbacks in flux. This week's NFL owners meeting generated a batch of fantasy-relevant tidbits, and I picked my favorites. So stand by for this week's top five fantasy headlines. Headline one, Matt LaFleur expects Josh Jacobs to be a big part of the Packers' passing attack. The decision to sign Jacobs and release Aaron Jones came out of nowhere in Green Bay, but it's starting to make more sense. Sure, Jones is an explosive back capable of making big plays on the ground and through the air. Jacobs, although a totally different player, has that same ability, and LaFleur is apparently all about it. As SI.com's Bill Huber pointed out this week, over the past five years, Jacobs ranks fifth among running backs with 127 carries at 10 yards or more. Jones is seventh with 113. Of course, Jones has two seasons of 50-plus receptions. Oh, wait, so does Jacobs. That explains why LaFleur told reporters this week that Jacobs can be a high-volume component as both a runner and a receiver. The coach noted that Jacobs has put some choice routes on tape and he can be a factor as a pass catcher in the red zone. Let's acknowledge. Jacobs' next touchdown catch will be his first as a pro. That said, he's one of four players with 50-plus rushing yards and 20-plus receiving yards per game each of the last three seasons. The other three, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and Jones. Yes, that's good company. With a clear path to a featured role and the likelihood of being a legitimate contributor in the passing game, Jacobs has already moved up to inside the top 10 of the 2024 Football Guys draft rankings. You'll currently find him late third or fourth round in early best balls, and I'm not against that. Headline number two, Calvin Ridley is slated to get the Jamar Chase role in Brian Callahan's offense. Hmm. If we might have wondered why Ridley landed a four-year, $92 million contract from the Titans, now we know. It's worth noting, hope is running high in Tennessee. Hype, too. SB Nation framed it like this. The Callahan era is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen. This is going to be an innovative offensive team. It's going to be awesome. Is it, though? I mean, I'm hopeful, but we're talking about a team that needs a lot of help on the offensive line. One that heads into this new era without Derrick Henry is the focal point. And they're doing it with second-year signal caller Will Levis at the controls. Callahan, who takes over the Titans after serving as Bengals offensive coordinator, is clearly setting a high bar for Ridley. Chase, despite missing five games in 2022, has averaged 135 targets a year in Cincy. So much like LaFleur's comments on Jacobs, Callahan's comment is going to influence fantasy investors. Should we buy into the potential upside here? Well, last summer, Ridley rose up to wide receiver 16 with a third round price tag without any of us seeing him take a snap in over a year. He finished his wide receiver 19. So the optimism is understandable. But remember, Ridley getting chase-like results will require Levis to be more Joe Burrow-like. I'm not sure we're there yet. We've got Ridley as wide receiver 34 on our current rankings, four spots ahead of his new teammate, DeAndre Hopkins. For now, that feels like a good spot. You like these stories? You want more? Get the Football Guys Daily Update. The biggest stories of football summarized, explained, and delivered straight to your inbox every day. Sign up and check it out. Unsubscribe anytime. It's totally free. You'll find a link in the description below this video. Hit it. Headline three. Falcons coach Raheem Morris is really excited about Kyle Pitts' potential usage. Welcome to the club, coach. In addition to referring to Pitts as the mayor of Atlanta, Morris expressed his excitement at Pitt's anticipated usage, or as the tight end himself would say, his targets. It's encouraging to see the Falcons' actions matching Morris's words. The hiring of Zach Robinson as offensive coordinator? Check. Free agent signing quarterback Kirk Cousins? Check. As cited in a recent edition of my Fantasy Notebook, available every Monday and linked to below, Pro Football Focus and Yahoo Fantasy's Kate Majuk noted that over the past three seasons, Pitts has ranked last among 40 qualifying tight ends with a 67.5% catchable target rate. Not good. Cousins, on the other hand, has the third lowest inaccurate uncatchable pass rate among 44 qualifying quarterbacks in that span. Look, I don't always like math, but those numbers work for me. Also working for me, spending a seventh or eighth round pick to land Pitts in early best balls with the hope that he can finally break out. This doesn't seem like a huge gamble. Headline number four, Anthony Richardson's on track to participate in OTAs. Okay, I admit, this might only be one of the biggest stories of the week for me because I'm all about the gifted young quarterback. And unlike Jerry Jones, who apparently doesn't know what all in really means, I do. If Richardson is a nail, I am the hammer. With that out of the way, I'll remind you Richardson underwent shoulder surgery October 24th and began throwing again last month. Colts coach Shane Steichen wouldn't say definitively that Richardson will be cleared by next month, but he told reporters at the owners meeting the quarterback should be good to go. That would set Richardson up for a full workload during training camp and a return to the starting role in week one. If that's the case, 10 of 10, I'll smash. 
In case you missed it, Richardson scored 17 plus fantasy points in his first three games, including a 27.6 point performance. His 22.1 point per game average through week four ranked fourth among all fantasy quarterbacks. Steichen, while conceding the limited sample size, was impressed, like me. In fact, the coach maintains Richardson made some plays that he's never seen guys make. Yes. Steichen was offensive coordinator in Los Angeles for Justin Herbert's remarkable NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year season in 2020. Also, yes, Steichen was a key factor in Jalen Hurts' development as offensive coordinator in Philadelphia before landing in Indy. He knows something about talented young quarterbacks. Could he be blowing a little smoke here? Maybe. Still, there's ample evidence the Colts totally believe in Richardson. ESPN's Stephen Holder contends the team basically ran it back with their roster this offseason because they're convinced the second-year signal caller is a difference maker who can help take the team to another level. Do I like paying the freight with Richardson's round six price tag? Well, with a wide range of viable starting options and single quarterback leagues available well into the double-digit rounds, I'll follow Richardson up to round five if I have to. But remember, I'm all in. You don't have to be. If you'd like a more reasoned perspective on Richardson, check out football guy Kevin Coleman's five riskiest dynasty quarterbacks. You'll find a link to that in the description below. Headline number five, tell me you don't have a starting quarterback without telling me you don't have a starting quarterback. Okay, the month leading up to the NFL draft is the official start of lying season. And plenty of teams will be looking to dive into what's considered a deep pool of talent at quarterback. Or not? I don't know. Look, I'm sure the Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell meant it when he claimed this week that Sam Darnold's best football is ahead of him. I mean, it kind of has to be. The Vikings have two picks in the first round next month. Don't be surprised if or when Darnold gets company. Raiders head coach Antonio Pierce said quarterback Aiden O'Connell earned a chance to compete for the starting job. The signing of Gardner Minshew suggested otherwise. And the ongoing rumors the Raiders might still be looking to move up from the number 13 pick overall add to that. Patriots head coach Jared Mayo said Jacoby Brissett could absolutely be the team's starting quarterback next season. The Patriots have the third pick in next month's draft. Seahawks head coach Mike McDonald said he is very confident in Geno Smith. Nonetheless, the Seahawks recently traded for Sam Howell. Giants head coach Brian Dable said there is no guarantee Daniel Jones will be recovered from his ACL in time for week one of the 2024 season. While that might explain the signing of Drew Locke, the addition of a veteran reportedly hasn't changed the team's willingness to land a quarterback with a sixth pick overall if the right guy is there. You can learn more about the available quarterbacks with the Football Guys Rookie Draft Guide 2.0. It's updated with everything you need to know from the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine and available exclusively for Football Guys Elite and Hall of Fame subscribers now. Look for the link below. And finally, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin said Russell Wilson has pole position to open the year as the team's starting quarterback. That seems to be an evolution from what we thought was a sure starting spot when Kenny Pickett was the number two. Now the Pickett's gone and Justin Fields is on board? Not so much. Get more in-depth reporting and interviews from our own Cecil Lammy, who attended the NFL owners meeting and interviewed at multiple head coaches and decision makers. You'll find a link to that below, as well as Sigmund Bloom's The Week in NFL News. That's it for me, Bob Harris. Watch for this week's Fantasy Notebook Monday morning. Otherwise, I'll see you here next week. And until then, you'll find me roaming the best ballrooms on a site near you. Thank you.